I want to start by distinguishing types of jokes from types of comics. There are certain types of comics, observational comics like Jerry Seinfeld, or anecdotal comics like Louis C.K. Granted, it's not easy to put any comedian in a neat box or category. What's important for now is the difference between types of comics and types of jokes. The distinction is that a type of comic can use many different types of jokes. Louis C.K. being an anecdotal comic can use blue jokes, physical jokes, or hyperbolic jokes to tell his anecdotes. In this video, we will focus on the jokes and their structure, not the content of the jokes which fills out the various types of comics. The story type joke. These are personal but embellished. They carry a certain ethos or a kind of persona that makes everything funny. The punchline is in the specificity or the imagery, the relatability or absurdity. Observe how Dave Chappelle adds these elements into his types of story jokes. Coincidentally, this homeless dude just out of nowhere pulls the dick out, started beating off, and I was furious. Because nobody said shit to this guy, they were just looking like, oh God. I was the only one on the bus that had the balls to say anything to him. And it's not even like I was brave, really. It was that, you know, I was sitting next to the motherfucker. I had to say something. Come on, dog, you hit my elbows. Stop. Son, stop. Blue jokes. These are typically risque, dark, or morbid. They can be self-deprecating. They're the controversial jokes that are sort of R-rated. There are many vulgar comedians. Jim Norton is a good example of someone who tells a lot of blue jokes. Predictable, cliched response. Well, I wanted things to be just like they are in a traditional Muslim country, which would be fine if I could beat her on a street corner with a stick. <laughs> And while you're at it, hand over that clitoris. You won't be using that anytime soon. <laughs> and here's the kicker. She wasn't raised in Yemen or Saudi Arabia. She was an American white lady who converted a couple years ago. Hyperbole or hyperbolic jokes have a mocking tone or they caricature something or they're largely observational and they blow something to exaggerated proportions. Jim Gavigan makes use of hyperbolic jokes in everyday scenarios. So morning, you just bought hot pockets. Hope you're drunk or heading home to a trailer. You hillbilly enjoy the next NASCAR event. Hot pockets. Ironic joke can also be a form of mocking. Uh, they can take the form of satire or parody of old cliches or hackneyed material. They can also be character-based. Patrice O'Neill takes an observational stance towards ironic jokes and often makes fun of cliches. Um, it's like, what if they go like, okay, the war is getting too crazy here. We're gonna move it over to Cambodia. Did you just do your hack Korean mama as Osama Bin Laden? That Korean is Vietnamese. No, say last comic standard, shut up, Dad. Esoteric jokes, these are highfalutin, very nuanced, and require some sort of privileged knowledge. They can be very prevalent among alternative comics, such as Dimitri Martin. Quesadilla, that's a word that you never see the English translation for. You never see that in English, you know? They just keep it in Spanish. I guess because maybe it's too awkward or something. You know, I feel like, and for you, sir, I will have the queso, cheese, female, small, please. <laughs> The non sequitur is arguably the most common structure of joke. It can be juvenile or unexpected. It can shock or be blue, and they often lean on a misdirection. Take note of Mark Norman's one-liners. We'll figure it out. Uh, I gotta figure something out. I'm, I'm, I'm 35, you know, I'm at that age where all my friends are getting divorced. Physical jokes are often the subject of comedic movies. But there are many stand-up comedians who often use volume and facial expressions to deliver the joke. Bill Burr is an excellent example of using physical jokes. Hey, what are you supposed to be, huh? Oh yeah? Full-size Snickers. Bam! Who does that? Who does that? Nobody! Nobody! I will break your fucking bag with my candy! Huh? ACDC pumpkin? You ever seen that before? You haven't, right? You tell all your friends when you've seen that shit. Look at you, lean to one side, that's heavy. Here's another candy bar, you look like dumbbells. Walk right down the stairs. Wordplay, these are often in written form. They can rely on an analogy, missing information, broken assumptions, double entendres, or puns. 
These jokes are safe for the whole family. Notice how Conan O'Brien makes special use of them to appeal to a general audience. Obama was re-elected because of the high turnout of urban voters. Then when he was asked just how he liked his coffee, Ryan said, no milk, no sugar, just urban. <laughs> so real jokes can be very abstract or meta or self-referential. It can also be surreal by breaking expectations. For instance, breaking the fourth wall. Craig Ferguson is a great example of how to be surreal in a talk show format. He goes way beyond and diverts expectation. It hurt me, I'm European. <laughs> and also, I, I have to look after my horse. <laughs> Mr. Nor Mr. Norris, we know that you are Walker, Texas Ranger. And therefore, as a Texan, you love all things horsey. Thank you.